So it's a 100-bed uh, facility. It's located in Brockville. And as I said, it's, it's mainly for uh, major mental health issues. Uh, we take inmates and we transfer them in from all over Ontario. And the main mandate is that they have to have a major mental health. It opened in October 2003. <clears throat> I've been there since it's open. It's, um, it's a correctional facility. Um, but again, it's, it's a contract between Royal Ottawa Healthcare Group and MCSCS. So it's a Schedule One facility within a correctional setting. So it's provincially sentenced offenders doing two years less a day, and we transfer them in from across Ontario and geographically. That, that's a challenge, bringing them in from the bailiffs from the northern institutions. Um, so we service 26 uh, facilities. Um, it's uh, mainly for offenders that are provincially sentenced, but we do take remand and immigration holds on a case-by-case, -case. and again, they have to have exhausted all possibilities before we'll bring them into St. Lawrence because they should be in the forensic treatment system. At our facility, we treat the whole range of, of serious mental illness. So we're a specialized facility, uh, unique in Ontario, and I think uh, we're certainly the first in Canada, uh, where where a psychiatric hospital and a correctional center both at the, at the same time. So the staffing uh, of our place in terms of like the mental health uh, staffing support is, is comparable to what you'd have at the Center for Addiction and Mental Health or the Royal Ottawa Healthcare Group or other sort of uh, Schedule One specialized uh, mental health uh, facilities. Um, certainly uh, PTSD is a significant, um, uh, you know, uh, issue for many of our guys, but certainly not the only issue. We, we, we serve, you know, the whole range of mental illness. We have significant numbers of people with psychotic illnesses like schizophrenia, schizoaffective disorder, major mood disorders, bipolar depression, uh, various anxiety disorders, including PTSD. Uh, we have um, more and more uh, people with intellectual uh, disabilities, uh, certainly the overwhelming majority have significant substance issues and most of the guys have a combination of you know more, more than one they're not like straightforward uh, uh, you know one diagnosis and uh, so we we treat complex serious mental illness really um, and you know when they come to us they go through a fairly comprehensive assessment um, assessment battery which includes a, a lengthy, very lengthy psychiatric assessment, several interviews. We have an assessment and stabilization unit. Uh, nursing is involved. There's psychometric testing that is involved. Uh, we look, you know, at trying to identify what an individual's, um, both their mental health needs are, what their criminogenic needs are, and develop an individualized treatment plan. We have a waiting list that typically runs at 30 to 40. It's not first come first serve. We triage people. If somebody is in another facility and they're referred to us and they're certifiable under the Mental Health Act, they usually get to us within one to three days. Um, and we're pretty successful at meeting that, uh, that uh, rapidity of accommodation. Uh, then we have some people that are deemed to be uh, urgent um, that will come. Um, uh, oops, where we go? The people that are urgent that will come uh, usually within one to two weeks because they're on the verge of uh, needing uh, meeting criteria for certifiability. And then the most most referrals are people who are clinically routine. And they usually come to us with about uh, four or five months left on their sentence. The referrals are made by from the classification officer at the home uh, correctional facility. Each correctional facility has a health care department, health care managers, deputy of programs, similar to my positions, and then that's the referral process for the, for the networking, for the admissions of offenders coming into St. Lawrence Valley. You know, there's the classification process, the screening for the mental health issues, and then with, as I said earlier, in, in partnership with Royal Ottawa, or in, in that A&D admission process, we screen out for the, the admits that have major mental health issues coming in. And as I, Royal Ottawa Healthcare Group is our service provider for MCSCS for St. Lawrence Valley. So it's a relationship in, for the service provider who provide all the clinical services at St. Lawrence Valley and MCSCS provide all the security perspective. Some of our uh, community partners that we've uh, certainly been successful developing links with who provide lots of support to our guys are the, is the Canadian Mental Health Association. Um, certainly we, we have received support from John Howard Society and so on. Uh, we've developed links with... Um, various providers of hepatitis C, methadone clinics, and so on. 
What's been a real challenge is for um, getting uh, some of our guys who are still certified under the Mental Health Act when their release date comes. Um, uh, we can't keep them. Um, but they require hospital level care and, and sometimes they're like a hot potato. You call their local Schedule 1 facilities and there's all kinds of barriers put up. We've had some unfortunate circumstances where people have not been accepted. We've sent them to an emergency room on a Form 1 and they, they get released and, and then they're right back, unfortunately, very quickly. Um, but we are, uh, we have developed a project with uh, London, Ontario and with uh, Toronto uh, to try to, to develop a one number to call uh, and they seem to be better understanding uh, the serious mental illness of our guys, the, our common client. Um, and we're trying to do post-sentence diversion with them. We're trying to, at the back end of, a, uh, of, a, of their incarceration, get them hooked up with uh, mental health services. And, and again, so we're, we're starting to develop more links in the community uh, towards that end. There's a stigma um, towards mental illness. I think that is probably less so uh, today than it would have been, you know, five, ten years ago. But when you put the combination of somebody who's, uh, uh, you know, been in jail, an inmate, uh, there's lots of red flags that people have and, and um, you have to really spend a lot of time with community partners um, to help them understand the individual because they, they are very much, um, you know, uh, uh, complex psychiatric patients, many of them um, that need those services. And, and again, some agencies have put up barriers, um, uh, just kind of worried for their safety and security of their staff. And often, again, when they leave us, they're more stable than they've been in years. And we have a lot of success stories, but often we do have to do quite a bit of work. You do tours and you, you talk to offenders and, and you know, they'll tell you this is the best they've been. This is the, the best they've felt. This is the best hope they've had for discharge and for discharge planning and for release. And I think those stories are, are, are endless. And, you know, I see a lot of that. And, and I see a lot of the uh, families that, that call me or the, the uh, mothers or the fathers or the brothers or the sisters and saying, you know, this is the first time our son has been engaged you know, we're welcoming him back home. There's hope for him in the community. Those, those success stories, I think, are, are what I see a lot of.